This is the untold story of the explosion of child malaria deaths. We estimate that there are more than a million deaths each year, which is uh, like seven jumbo jets going down each day, and 90% of those deaths are in children. 30 years ago, malaria, for most children, was no more dangerous than a dose of the flu. What has happened to turn malaria into Africa's biggest child killer? It is one of the greatest atrocities of our time. It is mass murder. Honestly, it's a form of terrorism against public health. And I'm right at the points where malaria kills children. So, so, so I feel it on a daily basis, and I know that this is the truth. This is about a very different battle against malaria, one very few people want to talk about. It is a battle against greed, corruption, and a murderous global racket in fake pharmaceutical drugs. But only now is the extraordinary damage caused by this racket coming to light. And it affects everyone who takes a medicine. If we allow politicians to continue saying we didn't know, we don't know, when the catastrophe comes, they'll have somewhere to hide. We've got to remove that hiding place and ensure that they understand this has got to be dealt with in a very powerful way now. This tablet contains the world's last effective drug to treat malaria. All the other drugs have now failed because of resistance in the malaria parasites. This drug, called artemisinin, is all that now stands between Africa's 500 million malaria sufferers and disaster. Resistance to the artemisinins, as I've explained, would be an absolute catastrophe for our current attempts to try and control malaria. And there's another problem. Someone is making deadly fakes of these artemisinin drugs and all the other anti-malarial drugs on a vast industrial scale. Here we have two identical pills. Imagine your, your child having had a convulsion, temperature of 40 degrees, and the choice really between these two medications is the choice between life and, and death. They are, for all intents and purposes, the same. But these tablets beg another question for the scientists who are trying to save artemisinin. Could there be a link between the fake drugs and all the genuine drugs that have failed? To find out means going back 30 years. In the 60s and 70s, when we were young, when we had malaria, our parents would just give us money to go and buy chloroquine. You buy chloroquine, take it, by the next day you are back to school. Then something happened to change everything. Today, Dr. Dora Akunili is director of Nigeria's National Food and Drug Regulation Body, known as NAFDAQ. The London-trained pharmaceutical scientist has become a crime fighter. In a corrupt, violent society, she has created the world's first effective force to fight the horrors of the fake drug racket. And in doing so, she came on a disturbing coincidence. Fake drugs were first noticed in Nigeria in 1968. It was when the fake drug racket broke out that people started dying like rats from malaria. People didn't used to die a lot from malaria. Professor Nick White is one of the world's top malaria scientists. He and colleagues have been investigating the rise of fake anti-malarial drugs in Southeast Asia for over 10 years. The question is why is malaria getting worse and not better? 50 years ago it was in retreat and today the number of cases of malaria, the number of people who are dying, mainly children, is increasing. I think it's a medical mystery, uh, but I think, it, I think it's one that might be soluble. In a radical new approach, Akuneli and White began to study the spread of fake drugs, and also the drug companies and health regulators who were supposed to stop them. The companies kept quiet, the regulators were being paid off, and everybody was helpless. Drug counterfeiters operated in this country and the most developing countries for almost three decades, unchallenged. And it just got worse progressively until 2001 when NAVDAQ started waging a war against them. And can you imagine a child, a sick baby, uh, most of the time they are suffering from malaria, taking chloroquine that contains one-fifth the strength, or taking chloroquine that does not contain any chloroquine. 
as well. I don't think people quite understand what a serious thing it is to give somebody who has serious, a serious infection no treatment. Um, to me, it's murder, or at least manslaughter. It's a story of, of criminality, where people are, for a, a profit of a few cents, killing people. Akoneli's campaign has made her a national hero to Nigerians, who know her simply as Dr. Dora, but it has also made her a target for the fake drug racketeers. Well, I think Dora's work is incredibly important, uh, tremendously courageous, but that's what it takes. I think it takes uh, one or two really determined individuals who are willing to put their head above the parapet and, and, and stir things up. And fortunately, she's, she's had response from, from those in power, but I, she's taken tremendous risks. This is where the other battle against malaria begins, on raids like this one in Lagos. Okay, that's true. This one, this one, so get ready. These are drugs, and they, and they stopped every shed with as many drugs as possible, and we had millions of the sheds, of course, with many, many billions of the drugs. We had, they had everything down to insulin, anti-snake venom, multivitamins, antibiotics. They had almost all ranges of drugs. Of course, it is a, it's fake. We tested and they, they actually contained nothing. Where are you from? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Abalende. Abalende? Abalende. You know saying a uh, fake drug you sell? Huh? You say? No, no. No, say the You know, the two way they say, no, say the two way they do look to find the water. Huh? Huh? Akunili's commitment to stop the racket stems from an all too common tragedy. You know how many millions of people that died from using fake drugs? My own sister died. That is blood money. My sister was a diabetic and she was just taking rubbish insulin. Her blood sugar could not be controlled. She eventually died. Even before she died, she had an injection, an injection abscess. The antibiotics she was getting, it, it, they were all fake. And she just slowly, slowly died. That was in 1988. The doctors were confused. We were confused. I'm a pharmacist, my husband, a medical doctor. Yet we were just looking at her dying. There was no awareness. It didn't even occur to us that this girl was not taking the right insulin. So I have been affected very badly. The suspects caught in the raid are interrogated as a deterrent against selling fake drugs and to try to get information about their source and the bigger criminals behind them. Would you like to be harmed yourself? Are you a pharmacist? I'm a chemist. The fake drug racket has imposed a silence on almost everyone it touches. NAFDAC brings its fake drug halls here. It is a vast tip with millions of fakes of the world's best-selling brand medicines. They are to be set on fire later this day. It is now estimated that some 10% of the world's available medicines are fakes like these. Copies of life-saving tablets made of just rice or chalk or with small amounts of active ingredients. In Africa and Asia, the fake drug figure rises to between 50% and up to 90% in some places. The global racket is worth around $40 billion a year. But it is anti-malarial drugs that are most often faked as the demand for treatment grows. Uh, we have uh, some four different types of anti-malarials that we are destroying today. One of them is uh, Halfan, that is uh, halofantrin. The, uh, the other three are different types of... So